folks. Thanks for checking out this video on how to end your survey in Qualtrics, um, the next video in my collecting data series. So, so far in this series, we've talked about most of the basic elements that you need to master to build a simple survey in Qualtrics. Um, and so now that we know a little bit about how to set up questions, disseminate your survey, um, and add ID numbers, I think the next thing that we need to learn about is how to end our survey um, in the way that makes the most sense for us. So today, um, I'm going to show you a new feature on Qualtrics that I haven't um, walked you through yet. Um, it's the survey options function. And within that, I'm going to show you how to end your survey with a custom message um, and to fully understand how to make a custom message. I'm going to also introduce you to the Qualtrics library. And another option that's useful for some types of surveys is showing a response summary to each participant when they're done with your survey. So I'll show you that and discuss some of the pros and cons of using response summaries. So meet me on over in Qualtrics in the survey that we've been working on and let's get started. Okay, so now we're here in Qualtrics and before we really get started, I want to remind you about two things related to the end of the survey. Um, I'm just going to show you what the end of the survey looks like now using the preview function. Um, I added some fancy design here. I think I showed you how to do that on Instagram, so if you haven't checked out my Instagram yet, go over and follow me at social underscore science underscore skills. Um, but I'll answer this question. And since I'm ineligible, it shows me the default um, end of survey message. So this is what we're going to work on editing. I'm gonna close this. Um, and remember when we set up the eligibility screener, we created an extra end of survey, basically. So now there are two ends of surveys. Um, here I'm in the survey flow and I can check that out. So if you wanted a different um, end of survey message for the people who are ineligible, you could um, choose whichever message you want in this box. Um, so once we're in the library, I can show you how to set up those messages. Okay. We didn't make any changes, so I'm just going to cancel. In case you missed those videos, I will link to the um, introductory video where I set up this survey and the questions. Um, and I think this question, um, in case you want to check that out. And I'll also link above to the eligibility screener video I did, um, which I just sort of talked about in the survey flow and where we created this age screener. Okay, so that's enough background. Let's jump into the survey options screen. So click right over here on this gear, survey options. So this is a really helpful page and whenever I'm starting a new survey, I like to go through every option on this page and just make sure that it's something that I know I and make a decision about whether it's something that I want to include in my survey. So let's skip over survey experience and survey protection for now. And we're going to be focusing on this survey termination area. So as you can see now, the default end of survey message is selected here. Um, I'm going to start by selecting custom end of survey message. We don't have any saved messages. There's nothing in my library. So I'm going to create a new message. Um, it's totally blank. Um, I'm just going to call it thank you ending. 
Um, so here I think it's important to include um, content that ensures the participant that their um, responses have been recorded. Um, and if there are any next steps, you can include those as well. Um, and the last thing that I like to include is contact information in case there are any questions. So I'm going to say, <clears throat> thank you for your thoughtful responses. They have been recorded. You could also add on this screen that you'll be in touch for follow-up if you've collected people's um, contact information, or if you have some sort of raffle giveaway for your participants or you're following up with some sort of compensation, it would be good to include that in here. If you're interested in a video that will um, teach you how to create a separate survey to create to collect contact information separate from the, your um, confidential data, um, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to make that. Um, but we don't have anything like that in this survey, so I'm just going to say um, <clears throat> Uh, you can learn more about this work at socialscienceskills.com. If you have any questions, email Grace at hello at social science skills dot com. Okay, if you haven't checked out my website yet, you can do that. There's a link in the description below. Um, it's kind of a work in progress, but it's I'm excited about it. Okay, so I think that's all that we need for our um, main thank you message. I'm going to click save and it's automatically selected as the um, end of survey message. I'm going to click save now and we've made a custom end of survey message. Um, I'm going to introduce you to the library function quickly. Um, up here everything we've done so far has been in the projects section. Um, Later on, I might make a video about the contacts page and sending out um, messages via the email distribution function. Um, but today, I'm just going to show you the library. So click on library. Um, here you can save copies of your survey if, or blocks of surveys if you use them repeatedly. Same with graphics, um, but to see that message that we saved before, we can look in the messages library. Great, so there's our thank you ending. I'm going to make one more, I'm going to copy this message and make a version that um, for our participants who are ineligible. Um, ineligible ending. Just click on it, click edit, and instead of saying thank you for your responses because they didn't submit any, I'm going to say um, you or thank you for responding to our screener question. I'm not sure if that's the right language to use with your audience, but um, you um, are ineligible 
underscore this survey. Click save. And good, you can also categorize into different folders if you're working on a lot of different projects and different surveys. We don't have that much to manage, so we'll just leave these uncategorized for now. So those are saved. I'm going to go back to projects. So I'm back on projects. I'm going to click on social science research. That's the survey we've been working on. And I'm going to go to the survey flow to change the message for our ineligible participants. I'm going to click, so this is the um, branch where we screen out people who are too young, younger than um, 18. Um, so we tell them that they can't take the rest of the survey. We're going to customize the end of survey and select a message. And here we have our two options, either the normal thank you option or the ineligible option. We'll choose that and click OK. Save the flow. And let's preview this um, to see if it works. So if I'm younger than 18, I will be ineligible. Thank you, you're ineligible. Great. I'm going to try again to make sure our other message works. I'm older than 18. Awesome, the eligibility is working. And I got a different message that doesn't say I'm ineligible. It says my responses have been recorded. Awesome. So we'll close this preview. And if this was how you liked it, then um, make sure you click publish. I'm going to do this actually because I like these responses. Um, and now I'm going to show you one additional thing um, that's... And now I'd like to show you one additional option um, for ending your survey. Click back on survey options, survey termination. There are some other redirect to a URL is, um, is a cool function and can be especially useful for linking two surveys together. Uh, but that's unavailable if you have the free account. Um, there from the, if you're distributing your survey via email, you can um, send specific send custom messages to people once they've once they've um, completed the survey. But we don't have people's email addresses. We're just sharing this survey broadly, so that function won't really work for us. Um, and there's also an anonymize response option here. But I'm just going to show you what show response summary looks like and talk about some of the pros and cons and when it might be useful. Save and preview. Okay. I'm older than 18 because I want to see my response summary. I'm great. And here um, you can, so when you've selected this survey termination option, um, it shows the default message here, and um, but shows you a summary summary of your responses, so you can double check that they're all correct. Um, you can also participants can download a PDF to save for their records. So I think this is helpful. Um, I don't use it much in research surveys, but I think if you're collecting um, data in Qualtrics that's used for like registration for a event or um, something where you want people to, or like scheduling appointments, I think it's helpful to be able to share with participants um, all of the information that they submitted so that they can confirm that it's correct or save it for their records. And um, that you can also, they could get in touch if they entered something incorrectly and realize it on this page. I hope those practical 
tips for building your Qualtrics survey are going to be helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions about um, different survey termination options or how we used it in the survey flow um, or anything like that, please um, get in touch or leave a comment. Um, thanks again. I um, We'll be posting a couple more videos in this collecting data series, so if there's any, anything in Qualtrics that you'd like to learn, um, definitely let me know that as well. Um, thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you feel like it. And um, look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!